Hey YouTube, it's your boy Widgie here, coming at you with another masterclass. And Akin here, he's been an absolute champion. He's going to be doing another masterclass for us, and it is with Russia. Now, big thing around Russia because there's going to be quite a few changes coming up very shortly for them. But don't worry, the majority of these tips are going to be pretty much will be relatable to that. So even if there are going to be a few changes, these tips are still going to be useful for you. So don't worry. But before we get into all that good stuff, I thought Akin him would just take it away very briefly and just introduce himself before we get into the first tip take it away again uh yeah thanks man for the invitation again uh That's all right. well i was uh, a competitive player a few years ago but i kind of retired because of the balance of the game that is not uh, interesting me anymore so maybe in the future uh, depending on the patches maybe i will play again in the tournament yep but uh today i'm here to help uh, Luigi and the community with the some Russian uh, tips on AOE 3. Fantastic. So, uh, so let's go. Awesome. All right. So before we do get into the specific ones for Russia, um, just one sort of general tip that you could give people. I know you gave another one before, which is around the mini maps. If there's anything else that you could uh, think yeah. of, that would be great. Yeah, I got one. I got one and I saw a lot of people are not using it. Uh, it's it's about um, the fact that, that, that you can see the amount of resources you can gather per minute. Yeah. Like this is an option you can allow it in the, in the settings of the game. And this is really interesting to put it on because sometimes you want to have this information to uh, re-macro if you have a, a bad macro at the moment or if you plan to edge up for example. If you want to know exactly when you are supposed to click on the edge up, like if you gather 1k foot per minute, you know if you want to go edge for, you need like two minutes before the click yeah. uh, for the foot, for example. So it's really interesting. It can be a really good uh, information, even on the fights and stuff. If you want uh, like mass units, right? It's really important yeah. and really uh, a cool, uh, cool settings. Yeah, yeah. I think that's really good, especially if if you know your your Civ quite well and you're, let's say you're going for a Musketeer, if you just know the ratio of food and gold, you can have a look and get a rough idea yeah. from how much you're gathering per minute, whether or not you need to balance it or change it a little bit, which is nice. Hey. It's even better, for example, if you play sieves that have a trickle, like you can have it with the USA, with India, for British, if you play with the distributivism, uh, H1. Uh, yeah, and Inker as well. Yeah. Yeah, like if you don't put any village, you still have the amount of uh, resources you trickle per minute, so it's really useful to have them. No, that's, yes, awesome. That's a really good tip. Fantastic. All right. Well, let's get into Russia right now. What is your first tip for the masses for Russia? Uh, the first tip is about uh, the very start of the game. Since they removed the, well, they fixed the the crate starts. Nowadays, you don't have the 100 coin as crates for Russian. So the thing is, if you plan to early on H2 to make five mosk, like early pressure or whatever, if you cannot find any gold treasures in H1, the best way to play it is to not make a market during the transition. Because if you want to make hunting dogs, plus veils, plus uh, house, because you want to send uh, probably the five costs, yeah. plus the mosk, you won't have the resources to make everything. So you will either delay the veal batch or the musk batch. And if you want to early on pressure, you cannot really delay the, um, uh, the musketer batch. So just don't make the market for hunting dog during extension. You make it when you send the 700, uh, 700 wood. It's way better. Fantastic. Awesome. No, that's really, really nice. The nice, quite specific there. I'm sure that I've, I did that error when I was learning Russia and I probably would still do it now. Actually, you want to kind of get that eco in and you're desperate to get a market down. But if you want to get your batch of musketeers out, you got to, you know, you can't do all of it at once. So yeah. um, no, that's good. Awesome. Um, what's your second tip? Uh, the second, the second tip is, uh, um, when the, the game is a bit long, like let's say above 10, 15 minutes, at some point you will like uh, spend all the food on the units and stuff. And if you run out of uh, food on the map, if you don't have the control map or whatever, one thing you can do is build a church and make some priests uh, with Russia because they are cheap, especially if you play with the, the card. There's a card in H2 that uh, reduces the cost. 
and yeah. the train time as well. So the tip is to just make few few prayers, like 10 or 15, to just and you put them uh, front of the fight to just uh, tank because they have a lot of HP and uh, it's a 10 percent uh, range resist as well. So it's just useful if you don't have any resources and you just spend the prayers to tank. Yeah, yeah, and can probably make you win a fight that you are not supposed to win. Yeah, yeah, especially for Russia because, you know, a lot of their units, they're very kind of low HP, quite trashy units yeah. and, you know, you, you need a lot of a lot of them to be effective. So having priests at the front line is very good so you can try and keep your keep your main army alive. No, very <laughs> no, very good tip. That's awesome. Um okay, so what is we we did actually struggle. We're going to be honest with you guys. Um Myself and Akin trying to come up with a third tip because Russia in itself is relatively straightforward and there aren't many kind of sort of complex or or advanced tips to give because they're very macro centric kind of civilization. But we have come up with one, you know, that can be quite useful. Um, so, you know, take it away, Akin. What, what's the what's the final tip? Uh, the final tip is um, the blockhouse positioning. Uh, positioning <laughs> excuse me it's all right and um, especially when you face a sieve that can rush really hard like hausa or even aztecs uh, i still see nowadays in 2023 people playing russia and put the blockhouse in the middle of the map which is a really bad idea against the sieves because they will have a better tempo and a better mass on than you especially if you made a mistake to make a transition uh, market with anti dog if you don't have uh, the gold traders so if you know the guy is going to rush you hard or you're not even hard just uh, it's better to put the blockhouse under the tc and just defend yourself from this point and with a 700 wood if you have uh, like a decent mass and if you face to the rush or not uh, well you can then put the blockhouse like further with this uh, wood crates yeah because because really, if you put the, the, the blockhouse in the middle of the map and if he rushes you really hard, if you lose this blockhouse, you will probably lose the game. Yeah. Because the, it's really like, takes a really long time to build the blockhouse again as we shall. So you just lose uh, probably 30 or 40 seconds if you put yeah. three wheels on the blockhouse. And well, it's just a, a bad um, idea. If, if you successfully defend and you do great damage, would you most of the time recommend aging up after that or would you want to continue in age two and push back and 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 try and end the game that way i think the well it kind of works if you go a3 if you play properly and if the opponent make mistakes or whatever but if you make enough damage with Risha, the best way is to just continue to play h2 this yeah. is a common mistake to age up as Risha, and i did a lot of time even in tournaments i know it's that if you face rushes if you handle it well the best thing is just to late age to Risha because the late age to Risha mm. is just insane it's one of the best of the game so there's no it's not there's no point to go a3 there's obviously a point but it's really it's way more safe to play h2 and to yeah. keep the map control because this is really risky to go a3 as russia yeah because okay. even if you send the cannons well the facts are uh, the russian falk has a bit weaker than uh, other european falk yeah so I mean, it's, it's still not decent falk yeah. But it's not worth it as a yeah compared to like other sieves going age three. It's, it's just yeah. better to continue to put the pressure on the opponents to just uh, making stuff food and gold. It's just yeah. way better. Okay, awesome, fantastic. Well, there we go, guys. Hopefully, they have been very useful for you. Uh, so the first one, just a quick summary, was around the market. So making sure not to overcommit with a house, a market, and trying to get deals out and musks and everything. So if you don't get any sort of coin treasures or anything like that don't go for a market immediately second one is obviously around the um the priests so using them to to tank effectively to sort of protect your main army and then finally is around blockhouse placement so if you're getting hard rushed or if you're getting rushed in general best to put your blockhouse defensively you know try and defend as best as possible if you, if you do very well push back out counter offensive in age two ideally so then you can hopefully take the game so there we go great so 
Moving on to the next bit, which is always good, is about build orders and strategies. So what is the current sort of meta standard build order that you're using with Russia right now? Uh, well, the, the build order, the land, land standard build order is almost the same as in, uh, as 10 years ago, even 15 years ago. This is uh, the first cut. Yeah. <laughs> The, the C didn't really change. I mean, at some point they changed, but they reverted. it. Yeah. So in H1, obviously you send the dis distributivism, normal as always. In H2, well, there's, uh, let's say three options. The economic one is to send the seven, the 700 wood first, like for make uh, the full market upgrade. Uh, you can as well take a TP. Yep. It's cool sometimes to take a TP. And if there's a, a water map, you can even make a dock. And behind you can send the 600 wood, but you have to play then a really defensive block house in base. Uh, the second build order is, uh, well, the early on aggression, early on red with the five Cossacks, really standard. Then you have to choice if you want to continue the pressure into 13 Cossacks or uh, 13 Strelet, sorry. Yeah. Or four Cossacks. And if you don't want to like full pressure, you do five Cossacks, 700 wood, you put second block house and you yeah. make a uh, market upgrade. Then it's up to you. You can send uh, the Strelets, yeah. the Cossacks, Boyas, or even uh, the 20% food, yeah. which can be really interesting. And uh, the third one is uh, relatively the same as this one, but you send the stress first. Like uh, uh, you can do it against Japan, for example. You yeah. want to early on uh, a uh, lot of threats to just uh, garrison as much as possible the wheels. Yeah. So distributivism, threats, 700 wood, five Cossacks, for example. Yeah. It works pretty well. Mm -hmm. And then after all that, when you have two block house, block houses, you can send as well the 700 food yeah. and put uh, more wheels on the coin or wood if you want to spam uh, threats and you can spam with the two block houses to have a decent mass. Yeah, yeah. It's really, it's really common to send the 700 food with Russia. Okay. No, awesome. I th Yeah, I'd say, like, that's a good sort of opening and, and, and good idea of the different scenarios and stuff that you need to do. So that's 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 awesome. I'm sure that's going to help a lot of people get a good understanding yeah. and, and fundamental of the uh, of the sieve and the opening. Um, what is the final bit of the interview then? What is a kind of meme strategy or fun strategy that you've done with Russia in the past? Um... One of the funniest strat as a British yeah, is the, the one, especially with the Priest. We've yeah. seen uh, a lot is I'm doing this strat on the stream. He's putting the um, uh, the, the card the, the card here yeah, to make the um, Priest uh, cheaper and train faster in H2. Yeah. And he's just spam units, 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 and he spams as well the Priest. And at some point, you have such amount of prayers that the guy cannot kill them because they tank way too much yeah yeah and if you if you micro properly you can even put them, put them back and heal uh heal them with yeah, uh, yeah. other prayers <laughs> and you can even make some res res with the prayers which is really annoying what's that you can make really what funny. resources you say no you can make reds like you can res the wheels oh you can res the wheels okay yeah yeah, yeah, yeah because yeah. they have like uh, five attack and melee like oh you, you know your wheel uh, is not going to die fast but yeah, at yeah, some yeah. point you stop to paying attention and at some point the wheel gonna die to Prius so this is really funny yeah yeah, yeah. wow <laughs> no, that's crazy no that's awesome okay and that sort of ties in well of the tips as well around making priests but uh it's kind of a bit of a bit of a different strategy a bit bit more obviously heavily around priests but no that's uh no that's really awesome that's great um all i can say is once again Thank you very much, Akin, for Thanks, you know coming on and sharing your wisdom. And hopefully you guys can learn something with Russia. I think I'm definitely going to be trying them out very shortly because of the new patch coming. There's going to be changes to the Civ. It's going to be a hell of a lot stronger, even stronger in age yeah. two. So I'm definitely going to be practicing getting on it. And uh, I'm sure Akin is. Maybe yeah, maybe too. there's something there. Maybe he could help me. He loves it. He loves... He loves uh, he loves coaching me, so we'll see how it yeah. goes. But um, no, it's awesome. Thank you very much, man. I appreciate it. Thanks, man. You're welcome. Awesome. Cheers, guys. Bye.